So this woman right here, is she sexy or sexist? Uh, I have to go with sexy, judging by the uh, picture of the lady. Yeah, very sexy. I think she's sexy. She's sexy. Do you see this woman as sexy or sexist? Probably sexist. I see her as tough. Oh, I think she's sexy. She's silicon. I mean, come on, she's not real. Her breasts are too large. Is she sexy or she's sexy? So sexy, because she's voluptuous. She's like, good curves. She's, she's kicking it. <laughs> Martial arts background, yes. She's got the thighs for it. Absolutely, 100%. Sexy, sex sales. Your opinion? I go sexy. Oh, it's a game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's got a gun, too. Yeah, I play it. Since their mega-hit Tomb Raider, IDOS has been a company on the move. So much so, we had to track down their big wigs from San Francisco to Atlanta, even as far as London, England. And let me tell you, they had a lot of stuff to show us. Well, it's actually become representative of gaming, and right. we're pretty excited about that. If you look at the articles, like the Face article or the Time Magazine spread that she was in, yeah. or when you see her on the YouTube Pop Tour as being representative of pop right. culture, yeah. you see that she really is the only identifiable character in gaming that's not controlled by a platform. So what are, what's coming up for IDOS for this Christmas? For this Christmas, we've got... Tomb Raider 2, of course. Tomb Raider 2. We're really excited about that. That looks fantastic. We're here to talk about Tomb Raider 2. The guys are working really hard, and it's all come together really well. We're really pleased. Well, I couldn't believe that a team of nine people made a game so rich and complex. Is, is, this, is it the same size? It's exactly the same. The team's a little bit bigger this time than uh, the first time around, which is a bit bizarre. Um, we got about 80% of the original team, and we've got some new blood on it, which have been brilliant. They've brought a lot of really new and exciting ideas. We basically reworked everything. We didn't just want to produce a, uh, a sequel, which was just perceived to be a system disc. So we've changed the locations dramatically. Uh, we've given the perception that you can go outside. We improved the engine by uh, generally about 50%. So there's a, there's a vast speed improvement. It means we can have uh, more textures, richer textures, more polygons, larger rooms, more effects. She's got a whole new range of new animations. Uh, the animation is really linked to the location, so things like climbing means that we can dramatically change the puzzle elements in the levels where she'll be able to scale walls. Um, the story has changed. We've got a great story this time around again. We get the initial idea of what the story is going to be about, and then we come to these guys and they work on that and produce the pictures using 3D Studio Max. So here, peeps can just flip through various frames. Uh, each frame features the wireframe of a Jeep hitting a tree. It's obviously lost control somewhere. And it's going to crash out here. We'll probably uh, on the screen have a little sneak preview from the wireframe that you're seeing on screen there. The next stage is to, to render that sequence up and then to have a look at that scene uh, fully rendered. We can just flick over here and just have another quick look at it, rendered up, see the difference how it looks. This tells the story of the, the dagger, which is the artifact which uh, hopefully eventually, if you're successful in the game, you should be able to get to. Here you've seen the pictures and also hearing the sounds. You can see, basically, you see how we can build up thousands of sounds. Just by the flick of a switch. I'm certainly going to kick Tommy Tallarico's ass. Into the Tomb Raider room. This is where Neil and Heather, who are working on all the games and all the levels and all the design, uh, create the environment, create the textures, set them all up. You can just click onto a room and go straight to that room. Put the lights in so they can see how the room will be lit. The little light bulbs are obviously the lights in the room, so Neil could probably click on one of those, uh, just lighten it or darken it, and you can see how it affects the room that it's in, how the shadows start to work. This really is a tool where to, to use your design and to build up the uh, locations for Tomb Raider 2. Here we see Lara as she exists in our eyes in the company as a wireframe model. Oh, do you think you needed the live version of Lara Croft to get people's attention for the game? I think that would probably help a little bit. The morale level might rise a little bit. 